السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا All praise due to Allah alone We all praise him and we seek his help Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves us say no one can show him guidance May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new edition of your program, Ask Kuda. Uh, last night was the first night of the last one third of Ramadan, the most important part, the greatest portion of the month, during which Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to increase his activities and she used a metaphor that he would fasten his waist belt indicating that he was about to do a very hard labor so that he would not sleep at all during the night rather he would stand up all night in prayer he would take a break to eat to drink for wudu uh, but he would also make certain that he would awaken his family so number one shed the mi'zarahu fasten his waist belt وَأَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ Second, he will awaken his family, make certain that his family members are also involved in such activities in the ibadah. وَأَحْيَا لَيْلَهُ And the night will become like a day. Everybody is up. Everybody is praying. Why? Because there is a very, very special occasion. One night is going to take place. In the last ten nights of Ramadan, this night, if any Muslim happens to be standing in prayer or in worship, in dhikr, in dua, most importantly, uh, the prayer, the namaz, then such ibadah would be, be, will be better than the ibadah that is offered over 83 years. So, this is an opportunity which only happens once every year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise. He concealed the night. Some people believe that it is on the 27th. And that's why in many countries, they celebrate that night. And that's it. Many people do not pray throughout Ramadan, uh, nor Taraweeh, not even the Fard. But on the 27th, they get up and they pray and they have fun. And Why? Because they believe Laylatul Qad is on that night. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Inni kuntu qad unsituha. I was made to forget it. Due to an incident where some of the companions were quarreling, so the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forgot, when is it? Which night is it? And this is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine if all of us know for sure that Laylatul Qadr is on the 21st, or the 27th, or whatever. Then everybody would rest and would only work on that particular night. We love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's why when we get involved in the ibadah, we enjoy it. We do not feel that it's a burden or a heavy homework that we have to do. Rather, it is something, particularly the night prayer. It is not fard. It is not mandatory. But we do it with love. The more we draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the closer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings us to Him. And the dearer we become and we get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one night passed. Um, it is known from numerous hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said, you should seek the night of Al-Qadr on the odd nights the 21st night, the 23rd, the 25th, the 27th, and the 29th. 
But since there are other ahadith indicating that which means the odd night will be depending on how many days was the month of Ramadan. So it will be odd from the end, not from the beginning. So you never know if Ramadan will be 30 days or 29 days. So that means we should work very hard in ibadah from the night of the 21st all the way to the end of Ramadan, hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us this honor of witnessing Laylatul Qadr while in a state of ibadah and dua. Laylatul Qadr khayrun is better than alf shahr than the worship of 1,000 months, that is more than 83 years, more than a whole lifespan of an individual who is standing all night in prayer and fasting all day to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us this honor. Nine nights left, maybe eight. So let's work hard. First caller today, Assalamu alaikum. Sister Umm Nasr, <coughs> I'm sorry, Umm Nasr from the Kisay. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Umm Nasr. How are you? I'm fine, Sheikh. Shukran for the full program, Sheikh. Thank you so much. Sheikh, I want to know that um, for the last 10 nights, um, we're supposed to go to the masjid and make a, a, a salah with the witr and that. But what about a woman who, who's a minister who just got a khayt? How will she uh, obtain those, those nights? Okay, Umm Nasr. Thank you so much. Arshad from Qatar. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, how are you, Sheikh? Great, thank you, Arshad. How are you? Yeah, fine. Uh, may Allah bless the show, and I love the show. I'm watching you from three years. I mean, I and, need to. Uh, may Allah bless Khuda TV, and may uh, your peace yeah. come through. I mean. So, uh, basically, I have three questions. Go ahead. Uh, my, first, my first question is that my mom prays Tarabi at home, but prays Tahajud uh, and with her in the mosque behind the Imam. So, does she get the reward for praying the whole night, or does she have to pray Tarabi? Also in the mosque for this reward, in the last 10 nights. Mm. And then my second question is, when we pray behind the Imam, do we have to recite Surat Al-Fatiha with our lips or in our heart? Yes? Okay. Third question, yes. Arshad? And, and, my, and my third question is, uh, how do we perform Sajda Suhu when we make a mistake in the Namah? Okay. How to rectify an error or a mistake that is done by you or by the Imam? Uh, no, done by me. By you. Such what as, can, can you give me an example? Like you forget uh, a rak'ah or uh, a pillar or a sunnah? No, 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 not a rak'ah. For example, maybe sometimes instead of uh, sitting up for tashahud by mistake, I get up and then again I, I remember it and then again I sit down. So what should I do for that? Okay. okay. That's why I asked you to be specific so that I will answer you, inshallah, uh, give you the specific answer because this is a long subject. Rectifying forgotten things in the prayer. Thank you, Arshad. Jazakallah khayran. Uh, Umm Nasr uh, asked earlier a very important question. You've been talking about the verses of praying at night and tahajjud, and also the first question of Arshad pertaining his mother's attendance to the tarawih or tahajjud in the masjid. <coughs> Is it better for her to pray at home or in the masjid? Generally speaking, for women, Praying at home is much more superior to praying in the masjid with the imam in jama'ah, the opposite of the meal. So for a woman, praying at home is superior in every word to praying in jama'ah in the masjid, not just in jama'ah. The Prophet said to a lady companion that your prayer at home is superior, a reward to praying behind me in my masjid. Superior to praying behind the Prophet ﷺ in his masjid. It does not mean that it is restricted or prohibited for women to attend the masjid. Rather, it is an invitation. If you can attend the prayer in the masjid, it is better in, uh, at home, it is better for you. Concealment is better for women. But now, if the sister goes with the whole family because if she stays behind, she uh, might slow down on the ibadah or fall asleep or, or 
she can go to the masjid and intend to perform i'tikaf during this time. I'tikaf is also allowed for women. And by the way, i'tikaf does not have to be the whole ten nights or days. That is the ideal case. Why the Prophet ﷺ made i'tikaf once uh, in, in the first, uh, one third, then the second, then the third. And he made i'tikaf. Uh, every time he was doing i'tikaf, he was looking or seeking Laylatul Qadr. So now, after all the hadith has confirmed that Laylatul Qadr is in the last ten nights, the Prophet ﷺ recommended performing i'tikaf. And his wives, or at least some of his wives, did perform i'tikaf in his life, and also after his demise, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is permissible for you to pray the taraweeh and tahajjud in the masjid if you go with a safe company because it would be late, if it is not affecting other businesses at home. And it is also permissible to perform i'tikaf with the permission of your guardian or if he is performing i'tikaf too he can stay in the ladies section uh, if he cannot stay for the whole 10 days and nights then as much as he can لا حد لأقل. as far as i'tikaf there is no minimum one can just enter to pray isha and taraweeh and before entering he intends that i'm doing i'tikaf for this time that i'm remaining in the mission assalamu alaikum Umu Abdullah from Norway. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm so happy. I'm so happy for you. Uh, what you are doing, Allah to give you khair and barakah. Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept. Uh, I have two questions and one question. question the first question is, uh, when you, I'm not in the Quran, I just know some of the Quran, I'm still laughing. And I'm learning from, from, from Egypt and Hafla. But um, I don't know so much. So what can I do? Can I just go back to the same ayah or still example I know and so I'm and starting it. In the prayer, you mean, right? The, yeah, I will pray. Okay. Okay, Umm Abdullah, okay. thank you. Uh, before I take any other question, Umm Abdullah, uh, uh, when she called in first, she admired Huda TV and its staff and so on. And this is all great. But it's just uh, something clicked in my mind. Those of you who were attending uh, the Tahajjud prayer in the Haram yesterday, I mean last night, or at least got to watch it uh, on television. Uh, Sheikh Dr. Abdul Rahman Yusudis, may Allah bless him, uh, led the last four rakahs and he read an ayah, and he could not resist the urge of crying. The ayah was pertaining the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Prophet Ibrahim and Ishmael to construct the Kaaba. And he said, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلُ Then he could not resist and he started crying. One should wonder, what's in this ayah that would make a person cry? It's a story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, remember when Ibrahim and his son Ismail were raising the foundations of the Kaaba. What will make you cry? What's in it? What's in it is, once he started reading, رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Our Lord, accept from us. You are the all-hearer, the all-knowing. Accept from us, this is a very, very serious thing. Prophet Ibrahim السلام, after passing all the tests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him through, beginning from throwing him in fire, ordered him to slaughter his own son, etc., etc., he honored him with the command of building the Kaaba. But still, Ibrahim السلام, while raising the foundations, he is afraid. He is afraid of the risk that his good deeds might not be accepted. It's not guaranteed. One should hold himself accountable. Am I doing this entirely and sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Qabul, acceptance is the key to success. Because you can do a lot. It doesn't matter how abundant are your good deeds. What matters is whether any of that will be accepted or rejected. Here Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail are begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم yes it pleases me it pleases all the staff here at Huda TV to hear the compliments and the good words may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us but meanwhile trust us brothers and sisters wallahi we are so scared we hope that because there are a lot of temptations in this kind of work we just hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept this work and make it sincerely for his sake amen please uh, always pray for us as well as for yourselves with the qabul that may Allah accept and may Allah grant us sincerity amen Saadiya uh, from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? Wa alaikum salam, Saadiya. Go ahead, please. Uh, Sheikh, I have uh, two questions. Yes, go ahead. Uh, first of all, when we perform Umrah, uh, do we have to cut our children hair also after finishing of Umrah? Okay. And uh, in these last 10 days of Laylatul Qadr, what has uh, more reward, praying or uh, reading Quran or doing Sikha? Wonderful. That's a good question. Okay. As far as the Umrah, because it may be urgent, if you take your youngsters to perform Umrah, who cannot do it on their own, you have to do Tawaf with them. So if you're carrying the child or in the stroller or, or, you do the Tawaf and Sa'i like adults exactly. And even at the time of Tahallul, you shore in or uh, shave the hair exactly like uh, adults. Also, you teach them what to say as far as the Talbiyah at the Miqat, and dua and so on so yes if you are in the haram right now and and i truly envy every person who is in the haram wallahi i swear to allah in whose hand is my soul and the soul of everything that exists if a non-muslim is put there he would love it he would believe that the, it is the the, the, uh, the most peaceful place on earth i always thought of this but of course non-muslims are not allowed into the purest spot on earth Mecca. Um, so, if you are in Mecca and doing i'tikaf, you can do the following. First of all, attend all the prayers in jama'ah, the fard, uh, observe all the nawafil, and at the time of taraweeh and tahajjud, uh, I feel very sorry to see some people leaving. They pray eight rakahs with the imam and they leave. Why? Because they believe that the sunnah or it should be only eight rakahs according to the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha ardaha that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never prayed more than 11 rakahs. Okay, take this. There is another hadith in which uh, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha ardaha narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed 13 rakahs. So that means the 11 was not a must. Rather, it was an observation that she had witnessed uh, and the proof that she herself narrated that the Prophet ﷺ prayed more than that. The hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased, Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, in a sahihain that the Prophet ﷺ said, Salatu layli masna masna, you should pray at night two by two. He did not specify a number of rakahs. Rather he said, pray two by two until that you are afraid that the adhan will be for fajr, fa'awtir. Then pray the witch. He did not specify. The ijma', the general consensus of the companions at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, when he assembled the congregation behind Ubay ibn Ka'b, and uh, Ubay ibn Ka'b started praying with uh, reciting long chapters, al-Mi'een, al-Baqarah, al-Imran, al-Nisa, al-Ma'idah. These chapters were pretty long. So they decided to shore in the recitation, we keep the same amount of recitation, but instead of reciting, for instance, a whole chapter in one rak'ah, they will divide it. And that will be done by increasing the number of rak'ahs to 20. And that was approved by the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. There is actually a debate between the scholars whether uh, it is better to pray only eight or more, depending on the hadith pertaining the virtues of sujood. The more you do sujood, the greater is the reward. So they said, why not, since there is no specific number that was ordered by the Prophet ﷺ, pray as many rakahs as we can. So this way we get to pray many sujood. I don't want to uh, extend the conversation in this uh, um, segment a lot because it's very deep. But my advice to the brothers and sisters who happen to be in the haram or any masjid, Pray with your imam until the imam finishes the prayer. Even the witch. 
من صلى مع إمامه حتى ينصرف كتب له قيام ليلة Why was such a word? If you attend the prayer the tahajjud or the tarawih with the imam until he finishes you will get the reward of praying throughout the entire night. A person who prays with the imam and leaves without a legitimate reason such as somebody has to rush to the bathroom or got sick or stomach. He just leaves because he believes I should only pray eight and that's it. Okay, you get the reward of praying eight but you did not accomplish the reward of praying the whole night as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So which one is better to read Quran or pray or do tawaf? Alternate because one gets bored. If you keep reading Quran all the time, of course reading the Quran has an abundant reward. But reading the Quran in the salah, the reward is greater. And also doing tawaf is similar to performing the namaz or the prayer. So pray sometimes. Read Quran. You can also hold the Quran if you're not half as the sister said, especially in the nafla. Taraweeh and Tahajjud, perform Tawaf in order to reactivate yourself and uh, feel fresh. Uh, sit and rest, make Adhkar. Just ask yourself yesterday, how many times you send the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ during these blessed times? The Prophet ﷺ is the one who guided us to all of that. How many times yesterday or today you remember to say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Jud Sharif, the last part of التشهد. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. مصطفى من نيجيريا، السلام عليكم مصطفى. وعليكم السلام سلام الشيخ هاو ار يو؟ الحمد لله، ثانك يو فور اسكن مصطفى. يا اي هاف تو كويشن يا بليز جو هيد. يس وان از هاو ميني ركعات بو تهاجو؟ اوكي. اند ذن ذا اذر وان از وين ذا امام فينيش؟ Recitation in Fatiha before you start the Surah, what is the, what uh, Momo supposed to do? Okay. Is it going to keep quiet or she uh, recite uh, Fatiha? Okay. <clears throat> for the Surah. Your second question is the same as Arshad's second question. The first question was just answered, but perhaps you're on the phone. So for the sake of time, please watch the rerun. I will answer the second question, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Ahmed from Qatar, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Shaykh, uh, if you recall, I called you on Wednesday regarding the Hajj Mia, and you advised me to go for Hajj. Yes. And alhamdulillah, I took the decision and I decided to go for it. Good, I great. It to my, Excellent. Uh, I conveyed uh, my concern to my boss, and eventually uh, I did decide and I gave up my option of going for the. Uh, let's say, the dunya, for that matter. And, uh, but unfortunately, uh, in the balloting, my name did not come. SubhanAllah. So I was, uh, I was a bit confused. First of all, I wanted to thank you to help me in reaching that decision, number one. Number two, I uh, just wanted to uh, seek your advice that is there anything that I can do, maybe somewhere, I may have had some attraction for dunya, mm. but eventually I, I had taken a decision for Hajj. Uh, can you go for Hajj with the private sector? Uh, Ahmed, can you go for Hajj with the private sector, with a tour company? Uh, no, no, the, the, the unfortunate part here is that uh, there is a limited quota for the seats and uh, I cannot go otherwise from here. At all? So, uh, like, uh, at all, uh, right now. Maybe next year, inshallah, I will try for maybe a couple of options, uh, maybe here. And uh, I'm originally from Pakistan, <coughs> I'll try from Pakistan as well and maybe some other scheme. Ahmed, do you so, feel sad at all? I do feel sad, but at the same time, it's, uh, you know, there's, I, I have a sense of guilt. Maybe there was something in me, but I did perform Sakhar and I prayed to God a number of times that please uh, do for me whatever is good for me in Deen and uh, Dunya. No. Uh, so I, I think I take it as uh, maybe uh, Allah wanted it to happen that way, uh, as there is a hadith of the Holy Prophet. Whatever happens, it happens because mm. Allah, ma sha So no. in that form, uh, accept it. Okay. Ahmed, let me tell you this. <laughs> Uh, uh, first of all, <coughs> excuse me. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man sa'al Allah al-shahada bi sadq, balagha Allah manazil al-shuhada, walla ma ta'ala farash." And we did speak about this hadith before. If you are sincere in intention and you're very keen to perform Hajj, and Allah knows that from you, then Alhamdulillah, reward is guaranteed. 
and it will not be diminished in art. And you still have to try next year, inshallah, since this is Hajjatul Islam or the main Hajj. It's not the voluntary Hajj uh, as far as I remember from your call last time. As far as, so if you feel sad about this, do not. Why? Because there is a list of invitees. If your name is in it, even in the last minute, your name will pop up. Don't ask how. And you will go. You never end up calling us and say, Sheikh, uh, I made it. Because your name is in the list. So this is something you have to keep in mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested your love and sincerity to Allah versus to the dunya. And alhamdulillah, shukla, you won. Your name is not in the list, but the reward is guaranteed. As far as the dunya, you did not lose it. You do you know why? Because even if you applied for it or accepted it, even without praying istikhara, you are not going to get it. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, "Inna ruh al-Qudusi nafatha fi ru'i." Jibril السلام, breathed or inspired Prophet Muhammad ﷺ with the following wahy: "Nahu lan tamuta nafsun hatta tastawfi rizqha wa ajalha." No soul shall taste death before receiving its full provision and lifespan. So this assignment, the income, the package that you are going to earn, if it is already in the record of, uh, in, in your qadr, you are going to have it, no matter what happens. But if not, then it is not your qismet and you will not get it. That gives a person some uh, feeling of uh, contentness and happiness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever Allah decrees for him. Barakallahu feek. May Allah give you the road to perform in hajj. May Allah make it easy for you to perform in hajj, if not this year, next year, inshallah. Zakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Umm Zahra from the KSA. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh. Wa alaikum um, um, Actually, I've just done Umrah in um, I mean, Medina at the moment. And based on your previous answers, I can hear the uh, Jama from the hotel I'm staying. Is it better for me to pray in the hotel then rather than going to the masjid? And the second question is, praying in Masjid Kuba, do, do we get the reward of uh, an Umrah if we go there and pray to Raqqa every day? Okay. That's the two questions. Thank you, Muzahra. May Allah accept your Umrah and your Ibadah. Uh, with regards to Masjid Quba, the Prophet ﷺ said in the sound hadith, for performing wudu at your place, whether the hotel room or at home, then going to Masjid Quba with this intention to pray two rak'ahs, Allah will give you the reward of performing Umrah. Can uh, you do that every day, even more than once a day? If you do it with the same intention, inshallah you will get this reward. As far as praying in the hotel, behind the Imam, if it is not designated for that, such as in the Haram in Mecca. The rows are, MashaAllah, la quwata illa billah. The scene is amazing, is wonderful. So the rows extended to some of the lobbies of the hotels. And that's why they have masajid or prayer areas that opens to the Haram. Yes, you can pray there, but in your uh, hotel room and pray behind the Imam, no, that is not valid. So you can pray at your hotel room by yourself. And you can uh, 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 come down and attend the prayer with the women in their uh, section. And I recommend this because you are not staying in Medina forever. You're here to uh, get the word of praying in Al-Masjid al-Nabawi. Because also I would like to tell you this. Every prayer in Al-Masjid al-Nabawi, the Prophet Masjid, is uh, or gets the word of 1,000 times better than praying anywhere else of course except in al-masjid al-haram where in al-masjid al-haram the reward is more than a hundred thousand times more than a hundred thousand times that's why i'm telling you brothers and sisters wallahi it feels like you are in heaven sometimes i see some people they spread their uh, janamas and prayer rugs far away one kilometer far away from the from the haram whether in mecca or medina why because they think it's a long walk, and anyway, the rose will be extended and will reach here. Why? You're missing a lot of reward. You're missing a lot of reward of drawing nearer to the first row, of moving forward towards the masjid, and you know how much good deed that you earn for each and every footstep that you take towards the masjid. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Uh, I guess we'll have to take a short break and inshallah we'll be back in a couple of minutes. So stay tuned. Welcome to Ramadan in Focus. I'm Yusuf Estes. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Whether you're Muslim or non Muslim, you can appreciate the subject of Ramadan. As we say in Texas, get the hay down where goats can eat it. You know? Totally and completely all mercy. If there is mercy, must be coming from a Rahman. How much? 99 times all of the mercy that's ever been shown in this universe is going to be shown to the believers on that day. And certainly we will need it. Isn't that the truth? Look, this is from the mercy, the Rahmah of Allah. So it's always a responsibility of Muslims to make sure the right message gets out. But it's also our responsibility to listen to those in authority over us. All the prophets are brothers and they uh, represent the same message. What was the call of the prophet? What was his invitation? He was invading, inviting to what? So the prophet said, Oh Allah, grant your mercy on the one who is tolerant if he, you know, if he sails. On one who is tolerant if he buys, and one who is tolerant when he seeks his rights. Try to discipline them in the best way. Those daughters will be his shield. That means those will be the reason, the cause of his protection from hellfire. Because of what? Taking care of them. What you have in this life, no matter what you have, is less. And it is temporary. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and uh, welcome back. Before I forget, I love you so much for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said uh, to one of his companions who was sitting with him, and another person was passing by and he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I love this man for the sake of Allah. I said, Did you tell him? He said, No, I didn't. And even, even think about it. He said, Whenever one loves another for the sake of Allah, you gotta tell him that you love him for the sake of Allah. And I feel, even without seeing you, brothers and sisters, for having the commitment to spend the time and effort to watch these programs, to learn about your deen, that uh, I love you for the sake of Allah. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite all of us by His mercy in paradise. Amen. Abdul Hamid from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam, Shaykh. Shai, I have two questions and one request. One question is, can we pay our zakat to madrasa where there is boarding and lodging? And second, I want to know what is exactly wuzu? Is it a ritual or is it cleaning one's uh, face and hand? And I, 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 again, the second question about wudu, what is it? Normally what I see in the mosque, people sit down, the jamaat is going on, they keep on rubbing their hands and faces and all. What is exactly wudu? I want us to know, is it just a ritual to wet the body parts as requested by Allah? Or is it to clean ourselves for the prayer? Okay, what you're describing is tayammum, not wudu. You said rubbing. Their no, faces no, and what hands. I say in the mosque when I go, people open the water too much and they keep on washing their hands and legs for a long time like they have come to clean themselves here. Is that a requirement or just it's a ritual to just your water going, touching all the part of the body ah, as required by Allah. I see. And okay. the third suggestion is that, Sheikh, I think you are doing a wonderful job 
why you not see that all the different topics of Ramadan, of Zakat, of Hajj is put into a city where people can buy and they can refresh themselves because every time we forget and we are asking again and again the same question which is taking long time. If this, such things are put in series with the questioners and different, different topic of different things, I think that will help a lot for the people who are really interested to learn the deen. Shukran. Jazakallah khairan, Abdul Hamid. Barakallah fiq. Saliha from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I feel, alhamdulillah, you have performed, I feel, have performed Umrah Mubarak. Thank you so much. Alhamdulillah. May Allah accept. Rabbana taqabbal minna. Jazakum Allah khairan. Thank you so much. Message is delivered. Alhamdulillah. Shukrullah. Arshad also asked about his mother that she prays at home, the taraweeh, and she attends a tahajud with the imam in the masjid so that she would pray tahajud and which would she get the full word that the Prophet said, yes, inshallah, she will get the word of the complete night because she prayed with the Imam the entire tahajjud along with the witch. May Allah accept. And I'm very proud of your parents, Arshad, such great parents who taught uh, their youngest uh, so much about the deen that you inquire about the details such as reciting Fatiha, the second question, after the Imam. The most right view in this regard, yes, every person should recite the Fatiha on their own, even if the Imam recited it out loud but what if the imam does not give you a chance in this case you are excused so if the imam recites a fatiha and innocently he begins such as you notice in the witch the imam recites a fatiha then he says Qul huwa Allahu ahad. so if you start reciting a fatiha you will not get to hear Qul huwa Allahu ahad. no will you get to recite surah al-fatiha so in this case you are excused uh, forgetting in the prayer the middle tashahud as you said if you forget a sunnah such as the middle tashahud which is not a pillar of the prayer it is important you cannot neglect it deliberately but I say if you forget it and you got up entirely then you're not allowed to sit down back because you already started a fard a rukn a pillar which is standing so you cannot wave it and going back and go back to a sunnah but if you are halfway or closer to sitting, then you may sit down because you've not started the rukn which is standing yet. In either case, whether you uh, made it up or you stood up and you skip it, that can be rectified by offering two sujood by the end of the prayer, which is known as sujood sah, the forgetfulness uh, prostration. With detailed explanations, should it be prayed after the taslim? or before the taslim, after the tashahud and before the taslim, both ways are right. The details is just for perfection. And you sit down in the, and you made sujood, and you say whatever you say in the regular sujood, you say it in sujood al sahu two sajdas, then you make taslim. That way you rectify the sunnah that you uh, skipped in, the, in, the, in your prayer. Assalamu alaikum. Zubair from KSA, Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, wishing you a great Ramadan, mashallah. Thank you so much. I have a question on zakat, specifically for a person who owns his own house, and then he saves his money and buys an extra land. You know, I'm being very specific. A land which he is not using, but it gets appreciated year after year. So my question is, uh, to my understanding, definitely zakat has to be paid on that, but I hear from people that you don't pay zakat on the land. Now, this is an extra land. Mm. Uh, second question is, what is the ruling on if you have a second house, if it is not the house you are living in, but you have a second house which you have rented out? Do we need to pay zakat or only the rent amount which has been accumulated or we need to consider the whole property value, including the rent and appreciation. I have a last question, uh, uh, Sheikh, is when we are uh, in Salah and uh, we lose wudu uh, during Salah, you know, in, when we are in Jamaat, what is the ruling on that? Should we continue uh, without reciting anything or should we break the prayers and then leave and join in again? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Mohammed from Spain. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. It's going to take a long time that you hear me twice and I hear you several times. Muhammad, make sure that you mute your TV set, please. Yeah, go ahead, please. Can you hear me, Sheikh? Yeah, I hear you perfect. Go ahead. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What's your question, Muhammad? Ramadan Mubarak, Sheikh. And Ramadan Mubarak to you too. Well? Uh, my question is, uh, sometimes when we are in the masjid, um, whenever we're having a prayer, you can hear some people beside you reciting by the imam. What do you have to tell us about that? Because maybe if the Imam is reading Fatiha, for, for example. I can, uh, I can perfectly feel you, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I don't think time would allow yeah, us to answer this question today, but I'd like to elaborate on its answer, inshallah, tomorrow, if we live till tomorrow, along with other observations that I have and I've seen. So uh, I got your question, Muhammad. Thank you so much. Uh, Muhammad from Qatar. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello? Yeah, Muhammad, I hear you. Uh, I have a question. Yes, I have a question regarding zakat. Yes. Uh, zakat uh, means uh, I have, uh, my wife have some, some uh, gold. Maybe, uh, for example, it may, it may be most uh, 100,000. MashaAllah. So maybe I have loan, uh, I have uh, I, I know. Uh, so example, not, not 100,000. Yeah, uh, it, it could be 100,000 rubies, then it's worth nothing. No. No, uh, I have loan for 80,000 maybe. So oh. I have to, so how could I manage the, okay. the card? Okay. Thank you, Muhammad from Qatar. Barakallah feek. Um, Abdullah from Norway, thank you for the compliment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and accept from all of us. She asked about uh, if she skipped over some verses that she does not know, like she reads verse number three, then she skips to verse number five. No, you cannot do that. And what I recommend is if you memorize short chapters or small verses, read them over and over and over. This way you practice, this way you revise, this way you keep memorizing them, but uh, reciting a verse from here and a verse from there and skipping verses in the middle, that's not uh, permissible. It does not maintain the continuity of the recitation in, in the prayer. Um, Mustafa from Nigeria again asked about the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha. If you are praying in congregation, the answer was delivered in brief, very shortly. And if you'd like to get a um, detailed answer, Please download and watch the program of the Prophet's Prayer. Abdul Hamid uh, from United Arab Emirates, Jazakallah khairan for the suggestions. We do indeed have um, a set of programs. One about Fiqh of Zakah, the Prophet's Prayer, Hajj step by step, how to perform Hajj. All of that in details pertaining the Fiqh part, uh, the legal part, and the spiritual part. All of that is discussed in details. Uh, I was always resenting the idea of selling that. Inshallah, hopefully this is a sadaqa jariya and a continuous charity. As you see, the channel does not charge uh, for the calls, for MS, uh, SMS, or, or for the emails or any of that. But it is running by your contributions and sponsorship. For that, these programs are available for free. You can always download them. Until inshallah one day we have a professional setup, we can... Uh, at least reward the brothers and sisters who are supporting the channel by sending them these uh, free uh, sets as a gift, inshallah Azza Jal. He also asked about what he sees that the brothers in the masjid, they rub their body parts which should be washed in, in wudu. Is it only sufficient to pour water on top of it, washing, or you have to rub? No, rubbing actually at the leak is a must. Why? If you, if you open the faucet and let the water fall, that's not washing, that's wetting. So washing, you use the right hand to wash the left organ, and the left to right to wash the right. 
maybe you're observing some people are uh, excessive in this regard, but uh, to be moderate, and you can do it only once. The Prophet ﷺ have done wudu by washing the body parts once and twice and three times, not more than three times. Uh, it hurts when you see somebody standing, there is a long line in uh, making wudu from Zamzam water and the Haram, and he's taking four. Why? Uh, he's almost taking a bath. Keeping washing over and over, especially if they have this is waswasa or whatever. We're saying, no. in conditions like that, in the masjid and whenever it's crowded, you can satisfy with washing ones, rinsing your mouth and nose once, washing the arms once, and so on. Yeah. Would that be valid? Yes, 100% valid, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Suraya from United Arab Emirates, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, shukla. Thank you, sister. Sheikh, I had a call earlier about my husband, and I want to clarify that uh, he doesn't have a financial problem, and also he accepted to pay 30% of the rent, but he still insists on living separately. Mm. Like everyone should uh, incur his his or her own expenses. Mm. Yeah, he still has his job, and uh, like that he wants separately, everyone should uh, incur his own expenses. Then we'll go to plan A, which is would you like that? Do you agree or you want... Uh... No, no. I clearly told him that I have not agreed about that. Okay. So you're asking for separation. It's your right. If the husband does not stand up to his responsibility, uh, which is not only the financial responsibility, of course, uh, rather it is the moral and the protection part. and It's a package. So uh, he wants to live separately and just uh, communicate with his wife remotely and she covers her own expenses, and he covers his own expenses, and lives with her own there, there is no such marriage life. And I'm glad you called back. You said earlier, I believe that was the last week, now I remember. You see, that's why we abstain from answering similar questions. Unless if I give a general answer. Why? Because you always have one piece that is missing. Or you only present in your view, your uh, point of view. One side story. We can never give uh, or pass a judgment based on hearing one side of the story. We have to have both parties. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that if you fear shiqaqa baynihima, dispute between the couple, فَبْعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِّنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا إِنْ يُرِيدَ إِصْلَاحًا يُوَفِّقِ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُمَا We have to send an arbitrator from your side and from his side. And they sit and they talk. He is your representative. And likewise the other guy. And uh, we see the different points of view. If there is a possibility for reconciliation, Allah will grant them success. But if not, then فَإِمْسَاكٌ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ تَسْرِيحٌ بِإِحْسَانٍ Divorce is permissible in Islam. It is a solution sometimes when there is no other uh, solution. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Uh, uh, um Tahra from the KSA said, that's another question uh, relating to the previous one. It just happened as a coincidence. She says, my husband praises other women in my presence and constantly insults me and puts me down. This makes me feel very bad. What should I do? When I answer this question and the husband is sitting and watching, he is going to call and say, no, 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 Sheikh, she, she's lying. As a matter of fact, she's the one who does the opposite. So when I give an answer, I'm giving a general answer. Can a husband uh, puts his wife down, disgraces her, humiliates her, and not just by beating her, uh, having a fist fight. No, by not loving her, by not caring about her, by not dealing with her as it should be. No, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Quran, وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ you got to live with them on the basis of kindness, of gentleness. Both have rights and duties, mutual rights and duties. So if you do not give her her rights, how do you expect yourself to get any of your rights? Uh, always think about it this way. You keep praising other women. You praise their beauty, you praise their manners. What if she does the same? And she speaks nice about other men. And she says, I don't know, why don't you never smell nice like such and such? 
or were nice like such and such. Would you accept that? No. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خيركم خيركم لأهله وأنا خيركم لأهلي The best of all of you are those who are good to their spouses, to their wives, to their families. And I am indeed the best of all of you to my family. لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم وذكر الله كثيرا Our role model, our best role model is Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم if we truly believe in Allah and hope to meet him on the hereafter, on the last day. Brothers and sisters, by that we come to the end of today's episode and until tomorrow, inshallah, I leave you in the care of Allah. Happy and blessed Ramadan. Waste not a minute of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Please, remember, it's a very, very precious time. If you have to take off, take a vacation, this is an opportunity you don't ever know whether it will happen again or not. So seize it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all success. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.